And we're living in a fascinating time. We're living in a time where women have money. Okay, which is, do you realize how new that is, right? That's like 30 years old or something, and there's no blueprint for how to operate, and I think it's really messing up the power dynamic. Like, the fact that I can pay my own bills, that's such a big deal for me. I thought that making money was gonna solve all my problems, especially my relationship problems, because when I was in my 20s, I had to date guys that had money, because I didn't have any. But now that I make my own money, I felt like it opened up this whole new pool of broke guys <laughs> that I couldn't date before, so I've been doing that. They're much nicer. <laughs> and the last guy I dated, I paid for everything. I paid for trips, I paid for dinners. And now that I've sort of been the man in the relationship, now that I've been in your shoes, I now understand why you guys hate us. <laughs> it's because we owe you so much fucking money. <laughs> and something happens psychologically, when you start to pay for someone where you start to hate them, you start to hate everything about them, you resent them, you start keeping score of everything they do. One day he came home, he was drinking a coconut water. It's like, coconut water? What are you, the queen of fucking England? How about you drink out of the tap like a goddamn man? How about that? And then they nag you. They always need something from you. You know, he'd be like, do you want to go to dinner? I'm like, you just ate yesterday. Do you have a tapeworm? What's the problem? I feel like I now understand why you guys are always so disappointed in us too. Because something happens when you start paying for someone where you start to get these high expectations for their behavior. Like as soon as I started paying for him, I started expecting him to like do chores out of nowhere. Like one night we went to dinner, I spent $200 on dinner. The next morning I woke up, I was like, this is weird, it's 8 a.m. and I don't smell eggs. <laughs> yeah, chop chop, bitch, mommy's hungry. <clears throat> it's tricky. I also started noticing all these like unspoken rules that happen with the expectations based on who pays. Like the expectation if the man pays for the woman is that she's gonna have sex with you, right? But when I was paying for the man, the expectation was I am not gonna have sex with you <laughs> and we're gonna stay up all night talking about my dreams. <laughs> I'm gonna read some horoscopes tonight, bitch. And then I saw like all the insidious, like institutionalized sexism. Like every time we would go to dinner, the waiter would automatically give him the check and then he would fucking take it. And then when the waiter would leave, he would slide it over to me. I was like, oh, hell no. If you take the check, you're paying. You better find yourself a Groupon real fast. I also get now why people stay in relationships too long because money makes, uh, makes things stickier. Like, I feel like I stayed in that relationship three months too long just because I didn't want to get a bad return on my money <laughs> because dating is such a terrible investment. <laughs> Which made me think, like, I can't believe we just run around spending money on relationships that we don't know is gonna work out. It's a terrible investment. I feel like there should be some kind of insurance in place to protect us. Like, I feel like dating should be like checking into a hotel. Okay, you and I are gonna start dating. As Soon as we start dating, you have to put your credit card down. <laughs> Three months later, if you wanna break up, I'll be like, all right, well, let's look at your bill. <laughs> yeah, you owe me $3,200 or you can't fucking leave. 